Hello, my name is Ian Danby, the director of the Burton of Biddeford, and I'm here with our resident artist, Michelle Shields, who's been working on establishing us an exhibition of her work. So the exhibition is called G-Coding the Collection. Can you tell me a little bit about what that is and what that means to you? Yeah, I first came across RJ Lloyd um, when I moved to Barnum. So I found this book and his collection and the story of him as an artist, as a collector, was really fascinating. Um, and I started to work digitally and this collection struck me um, that I wanted to kind of engage with it in a or have a digital response. So um, G-coding the collection actually means um, creating a scan of an object um, and turning that into a G-code which then I can manipulate and print, um, so 3D print, so work digitally. So I guess that was the starting point, and G codes are sort of central to this new language I've kind of been developing during the residency. And behind you is some examples of your work which reflect the jugs which have been scanned and then 3D printed. Um, you've also did some workshops here, um, of last year. Tell me a bit about what your passion is in terms of the collection and working with people. So the collection. You know, once you're immersed in it, just fires off so many ideas um, and excited things about as a maker, but also about giving workshops and maybe about teaching certain techniques, or more importantly, sharing my making skills. So I did five days of workshops here at the Burton of Biddeford, um, and each of those workshops were an introduction to basic hand building techniques. So away from a studio practice, anyone could, could make this way with a bag of clay, so it's pinching, coiling, um, slab building, and then using decorative slips, which, you know, slipware is just so indicative of this collection, and then scruffito, which is just such an, you know, an energised way of getting some marks into your pot, and then a clear glaze, so really simple, um, and, it, and it kind of shows my excitement for the collection and wanting to share that, and share that passion that I have for play. Um, but also alongside that, embracing traditional ways of making and thinking, it also inspires in me future ways of making and future um, technologies for creating. So it has this paradox of what's gone before and what, what do we not know about yet, where we can push play into, and I'm really, trying to find my own language in that way of doing things that maybe an engineer would do or, or an architect and pushing it into the material of the clay which is just so responsive. You know when you roll a slab the basic hand building is rolling and turning and rolling and keeping those platelets nice and aligned so they don't warp when they're then being heated in a kiln. So even though these pieces sound easy and the technology is involved, actually it caused me a lot of technical problems I had to solve, which is why I'm a potter, because I find that fascinating. Okay. And it's doing shapes that I've not seen before and actually finding that that's quite impossible, but finding a, a solution in the end. So there's always problem solving. And the same with 3D printing, it sounds easy, you just print something, it sounds, but the technical knowledge you need, and as a craftsperson, CAD is a real steep learning curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's many facets going on, and there's lots of challenges along the way. What, in, what informed your selection of works from the collection which you have out and display here? So it's the decoration, so the same thing as RJ Lloyd, that he was really drawn to the de decoration of the work, so this graffito, the mark making, is really, really important. Um, so it really is about the marks that, that capture an energy of, of the potter, you know, and also this beautiful honey glaze that just is, is the best thing. Um, so so it, it's, it's, a, it's a, a mixture of also um, sizes of objects, you know, I had two small, two medium, two large, so um, those constraints are quite interesting working in CAD and 3D printing, um, but definitely finding a way within uh, the workspace of CAD to bring out those graffito mark makings took me quite a while to problem solve. 
And a lot of the works on here, I mean, some of the marks are quite political. There's sort of Extinction Rebellion, there's some there's things about recycling and the environment and a lot of information about sort of the EU and presumably referring to Brexit and things like that. Yeah, and the NHS. So when I, when I was formulating the workshop um, for the 50 jokes, um, I created a whole set of digital stamps and they reflected um, bits of scraffito from the collection, drawing little icons, the Burnet Biddeford stamp. And then I started to think about, hang on, you know, I'm working in 2020, 2021. What's happening politically? You know, all these pots, you know, if you look at them or the Nelson pot, when was it, when was it made and what was happening politically really fascinates me. So I wanted mine to be rooted in the here and now. And there's so much going on. You know, the form of my pots reflecting, I think, in, um, ha I hope, um, this sort of difficult two years we've had. But the political bits and the stamps were to feed through for the workshops and actually now they're feeding through to my own work. Um, and in terms of, sort of you're, you're working very much at the bleeding edge of technology and ceramics, um, are there other makers that are doing similar things or are you sort of out there on your own pushing the boundaries and moving um, forward? No, I've been in a show recently at London Craft Week, so Jonathan Keep. Um, is the one that we all look up to who pioneered 3D printing with clay maybe 10 years ago and he was um, a tradition started as a traditional potter and found his way gradually into 3D printing. I was also going to show Nico Conte who works downstairs 3D printer at London Design Week. Um, Fred who works at Goldsmith. Um, so there's lots of people that work in the same way. My friend Helene Sinterbin who's Belgian based designer we, we worked together at Grimsdyke Farm and our friendship began because we had this love of and the shared passion of digital making and his perspective is from Belgium, um, things happening there with Studio Unfold um, and there's a piece um, in there as well. So in terms of the some elements of you make moulds using 3D printers, obviously there's a number of the actual 3D printed objects here, which are made out of, for people who don't know, made out of paper, um, potato starch. Yeah, PLA. Um, which is fascinating, so it's kind of very environmentally um, sound. I mean, they, they're all compostable, I suppose. Yeah, and it really, in a fact, it could, you could say it was a modern clay, because if I had a tool to, to crush that back down, I could turn it back into a filament and I could re-3D print another object. So in the same way that we recycle clay, we could do that with these, with the right technology, and I think it's moving in that way that people have the autonomy to recycle their own filament. There's also a teapot in the case that the spout is 3D really pr printed with clay, and the body is hand built, and it's fired in an anagam kiln. So that's that's my thinking about hybrid making. So combining technology with the handmade, but also using. Um, traditional ways of firing and then this amazing language comes through uh, from that combination that collision of kind of ways of thinking and making. So the other things that you've made uh, are using a robot and a CNC style machine. Tell us a bit about how that works. Yeah so 3D printing is an additive um, manufacturing process and making process adding material gradually and CNC is subtracting so it's taking away material so you know why not put a piece of clay in a cnc machine what happens normally it's wood metal and we got these amazing uh, beautiful scraffito lines so that was a new body of work and we worked actually at grimsdyke farm to develop that which is a facility in buckinghamshire and it's mainly architects that work with it but they are embracing clay from an architectural perspective so and we were there as craftspeople and we were sharing ideas about material. And, and uh, your day-to-day -day job obviously as, a, as, as an artist but also you teach as well. Yeah I work at UCA in Farnham so I work in the ceramics and glass department and I embedded there 3D printers working with clay so I went there with a passion for digital making and set up their digital workshops but I also teach the traditional ways of making and firing. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.